Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries, and in this video, I'm gonna be sharing how I built this rotating bookshelf. This is a super easy project, but it's so much fun to put together. So if you're ready to dive in and get building, let's go. This video was sponsored by my friends at Make By Me. To get started with this build, I pulled out a sheet of, you guessed it, birch plywood. That's my favorite. Then I pulled out, you guessed it again, my circular saw and Craig rip cut. You guys probably also know that that's my favorite way to cut this stuff. First I ripped a 16 inch wide strip from my sheet to make the main body of this shelf from. I'll also need two more pieces of plywood to complete the build, one piece for the base and one for the top. But I was able to find these pieces in my scrap pile, so for now, I took this strip to the miter saw and put the rest of my plywood sheet back in storage. From this strip, I cut two long pieces for the sides of the shelf and three short pieces, one for the top, one for the bottom, and one for the middle. I also went ahead and cut a piece for the top from some scraps, 17 inches square, so that I could edge band everything all at once. I applied iron-on edge banding to the front and back edges of these pieces because that's what will be exposed in the finished project. Of course, edge banding is always optional, but it does look a little cleaner in most cases. If you want to know more about applying edge banding, I'll link a detailed guide in the description below that you can check out. Once the banding was on, I gave each piece a quick sanding before starting to assemble. Then I drilled three quarter inch pocket holes along the edges of the short pieces in order to assemble the bookshelf box. Now before we assemble, let's take a moment to dive into the design and how I planned it. You may have heard me mention Make By Me before, but if not, allow me to introduce you to it. Make By Me is a program that lets you shop for materials and digitally assemble your projects all from your desktop or your phone. Once you've built your project digitally, it automatically creates a materials list and a cut list for when you're ready to build it in real life. Make By Me is free to use and it automatically generates building plans and amazing visuals for your DIY projects so that you know what to expect before making any sawdust. I used it to draw up and plan out this rotating bookshelf build and I'm sharing the free plans for it over on Make By Me's website. I'll leave a link in the video description if you'd like to grab them. If you want to try it for yourself, simply head over to home.buy.me slash en slash makebummy from your internet browser on either your phone or your computer. Create an account or sign in, then click start a new project and start building. Now let's turn this rendering into reality. I assembled this basic box using pocket hole screws, making sure to face the pocket holes toward the outside of the box so that they'll be hidden in the finished project. This box ended up being 16 inches square on the top and bottom, and I made it 26 inches tall. Now you can certainly modify the sizing, but if you do, it's important that the bottom be square so that all sides are equal widths. I'll obviously be putting books inside this box, but for some book storage on the side, I decided to add four what I'll call ledges. I made these one and a half inches deep, so I ripped some scraps down to one and a half inches wide. These were walnut plywood scraps that I had left over from a recent build. I thought the walnut would be a neat contrast against the birch plywood. So I trimmed down eight pieces to 12 inches long and glued these up into pairs to make four ledges. Sorry about the blurry shots here. I zoomed in and the camera was auto focusing weird. I make videos, but that does not mean that I know how to use a camera. <laughs> Once the glue had dried on these, I used two inch wood screws to secure them on each side of the box. 
I installed the bottom ledge about three quarter inch up from the bottom edge of the box and the top about 12 inches up from that. I just held these ledges in place and pre-drilled a hole before driving the screws. Full transparency, I got a little too close to the edge of the ledge a couple of times and I had to redo some screws. But don't worry, the middle shelf will cover my boo-boos. <laughs> Once I had all four ledges installed, I slid the middle shelf into the box so that it was about 13 inches up from the bottom panel. Then I secured it in place with pocket hole screws. Now the bookshelf portion of the project is almost finished except for the top. I placed the top panel on the box and centered it on all sides. Then I secured with one and a quarter inch wood screws from the bottom side. And with that, the top is complete and I moved on to building the base. The base is a frame made of two by twos with a plywood center. So first I cut four two by twos for the frame sides. I actually used scraps that I removed from Lucy's old wooden dog crate. So they already had some pocket holes drilled, as you can see. Speaking of Lou, her and Bubs were around the shop for this entire build. Then I cut four two by two legs for the base and a 13 inch square piece of plywood for the middle. I drilled pocket holes into the ends of the 2x2s for the frame and along the edges of the plywood panel to assemble. Then I assembled the base using wood glue and pocket hole screws. I actually installed the plywood panel before adding the last side, then realized that that wasn't going to work. So I took it back out, added the last side, then tapped it back in place and secured. Now the top and the base are both assembled and I needed to put them together. Because I wanted this to rotate, I used a 12 inch diameter Lazy Susan to attach between these two sections. First, I used a straight edge to draw lines across the diagonal of the base to help me center the hardware. Okay, so the Lazy Susan, I'm going to mount it to the base here and then I'm gonna need to drill out the two holes right here. I'm gonna mark them. They're like two oversized holes in the hardware. I don't know if you can see this very well. There's one right there and then one right there. Um, I marked them so I can drill like two access holes in the base here. That way, once I mount this to the base, I can drill through the underside to screw it in to the top. There's holes down in here. I'm trying to line up with the X's to make sure this is centered. I used a one inch Forstner bit to drill holes at my marks, then centered the hardware and used some small 5 8 inch screws to attach to the base. To make it easier to attach this to the top, I flipped it upside down on the floor, then flipped the base upside down on top of it. 
now I can see down in these access holes and I twist until I see a hole to install into. Here's one. Then I keep, oh, there's one on the other side too. So then I just spin it around until I see another hole. There's a few different size holes that you can use. It doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna get at least four screws in the bottom. I used the same 5 8 inch screws to secure the other side as well. Then I flipped it over and tested it out. The very last thing was adding some handles to the sides to prevent the books that I put on the ledges from falling out. I did not realize these were going to be so small, like this part. So not much can fit in there, but you could probably fit like a notebook, magazine, something like that. I'm going to go ahead and put these on here anyway, even though they're not quite as big as I expected them to be. If I did this again, I would probably rethink the handles and use something a little deeper or just make my own. But I had already ordered these handles specifically for this project, so I just went ahead and installed them anyway. Full transparency, I had planned to leave this unfinished, but I decided last minute to apply some poly to it so that the walnut would stand out a little better against the birch. It would definitely have been easier to finish this before attaching the base in the top and before adding the handles, but I did the best I could without taking them back apart. And with that, this simple Lazy Susan bookshelf was complete and ready for books of all shapes and sizes. This would be great for books in an office, cookbooks in a kitchen, or even use it in a game room or living room for books, board games, DVDs, or records. If you'd like to build one for yourself, don't forget to grab the plans linked in the description below. And while you're there, be sure to check out Make By Me for your next build. Thanks so much for watching, friends. And until next time, happy building.